In this video, I will explain how to calculate deadweight loss. So let's jump into an example. Let's say we're given the following demand function and the supply function for some good. I've gone ahead and graphed both the demand function and the supply function for this good. Now for this particular good, the equilibrium price is $140. This is the price that this good is currently being sold at on the market. At that price, there is a demand of 12 units of this good. So this is the equilibrium quantity. Now, when this good is being sold at this equilibrium price and this equilibrium quantity, this area of the graph right here, so the area above the equilibrium price but below the demand curve, this is referred to as the consumer surplus. And this area represents the sum of all of the transactions where the consumer actually would have paid more for this good, but they get to enjoy the benefit of only paying $140. For example, some consumers were willing to pay a price all the way up here. Let's say this was like $200, but they only have to pay $140 because that's the equilibrium price. That is the selling price of this good. And there were some consumers that were also willing to pay, let's say like $160 for this good, but they also got to enjoy the benefit of only paying $140. So the sum of all of these transactions where the consumers would have paid more, but they didn't actually have to, that's known as the consumer surplus. Now on the flip side, this area of the graph, so this area below the equilibrium price, but above the supply curve, this is called the producer surplus. So this is the sum of all of the transactions where the producers were willing to sell it for a lower price, but they actually got to sell it for a price of $140. So for example, maybe a producer down here would have sold this good for $120, but they got to enjoy the benefit of selling it for $140, the equilibrium price. So the sum of all of those transactions is the producer surplus. Now, let's imagine a scenario where the government steps in and they impose a price floor of $170. So this means that you cannot buy this good for less than $170. Notice what happens to both the supply and the demand. The supply for this good, so where the supply function intersects this price floor, is all the way out here. So remember the quantity sold was 12 in a free market, but the quantity supplied has now increased all the way out here, which makes sense because producers are saying, oh yeah, I'd love to sell more of this good for a higher price. So the quantity supplied has increased. But notice what has happened to demand. So where the price floor intersects the demand curve is right here. So the quantity demanded has gone to the left, it has decreased. And that makes sense too, because consumers are saying, no, I don't want to pay such a high price for this good. So the quantity demanded has gone down. Now, when this occurs, our new consumer surplus is this little triangle right here. So it's still the area in the graph that is above the selling price, but below the demand curve. But notice how much smaller it has gotten. And the producer surplus is now this area in red right here. So it's still the area below the selling price, but above the supply curve. But notice that there's a new section of this graph. It's this triangle right here. The area of this triangle is referred to as deadweight loss. And this represents the sum of all of the transactions that would have occurred in a free market, but now they no longer occur because the price floor is set so high. So all of these transactions that previously would have occurred in a free market, they're no longer going to occur. So how do we calculate the value of this deadweight loss? Well, one thing that we'll notice about this deadweight loss region is that it's a triangle. So all we have to do is calculate the area of this triangle to figure out the total deadweight loss. So the area of a triangle, all right, A, is equal to 1 half times the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. Now, the height of this triangle is this distance right here. So we know that the triangle ends at a quantity of 12, we have to figure out what is this other quantity on this side right here. So to do that, all we have to figure out is what is this value right here for the quantity? So what is this line? So to figure that out, we can plug in a value of 170 into the demand curve. Remember, that's the blue curve and just figure out what is this quantity. So let's plug in a 170 for the price and the demand curve and let's figure out what is this quantity value. So let's write the quantity demanded is equal to 40 minus 0.2 times 170. So we're plugging in 170 for the price. So we get 40 minus 0 0.2 times 170. That turns out to be 34. So we have 40 minus 34, which is 6. So this quantity right here is 6. So now we know the base of this triangle. It's simply the distance from 6 to 12, which is 6. The last thing we have to figure out is 
the height of this triangle, so this distance right here. So again, this point is 170. Let's figure out what is this point. So to figure out this point, all we have to do is plug in a 6 into the quantity supplied for the supply curve and figure out what P is. Because notice, if we plug in a 6 in the supply curve, this will tell us what this value is right here, the price. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll plug in a 6 for the quantity supplied and figure out what P is. So we get 6 is equal to negative 30 plus 0.3 P. So we're solving for P. So if we add a 30 to both sides, the 30s on this side cancel out. 30 plus 6 is 36 is equal to 0.3 P. And lastly, to solve for P, we can divide both sides by 0.3. So the 0.3s on this side cancel out, and we're left with P is equal to 36 divided by 0.3. That turns out to be 120. So this point right here is 120. So now we have everything we need to calculate the area of this triangle. So I'm going to erase a little bit over here and make a little room. So the area of this triangle is A is equal to 1 half times, remember the base we said is the distance from this point, to this point in the triangle. So the base has a distance of 12 minus 6, which is 6. So we'll say times 6, and then the height of this triangle, remember that's the distance from this point to this point right here. So that's 170 minus 120, which is 50. So the height, we are multiplying by 50. So for the area, we get 1 half of 6, that's 3 times 50. And 3 times 50 turns out to be 150 and we'll label this as dollars. So the total dead weight loss is $150. This represents the sum of all of the transactions that would have occurred in a free marketplace at the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity, but now those transactions are no longer occurring because the price floor is set so high that the quantity of the transactions that occur is lower. So that was just a quick example of how to calculate dead weight loss.